In Neo, let's get infinite XP and break through the level in stat cap using Cheat Engine. Welcome to Game Hacking 202. We're picking up right where we left off in Game Hacking 201, so if you missed it, check out the link in the description below. Also, if you have no idea how to use Cheat Engine, you should probably go back and watch this series from the beginning. We'll also have a link to the full series in the description below. But alright, let's get into it. I've got our script pulled up from Game Hacking 201, and in that video, I kind of gave myself infinite XP by deleting this instruction, which essentially freezes our Amrita, or XP value in place, when I increase one of the stats. But this is only useful if you already have more XP than what's needed to level up in the first place. So instead, let's modify the script to set XP to a much higher number when we level up. This is the original line of game code that I hooked in the last video to generate this script, and it's this line of code that controls what XP becomes when we level up. But before we get into how to modify this to do what we want it to, let's take a look at what kind of code this actually is. Every PC game is written in a computer coding or scripting language, most commonly one of these. But, without getting too technical, these are all high-level languages which are easier for humans to use and understand, but not for computers themselves. In fact, computers really only understand what's called machine language, which consists of just zeros and ones. But, machine language is really, really hard for humans to read and understand, let alone write in. So, between these two extremes, we have assembly language, which is still considered a low-level language and can be quickly converted to machine code, but it can also be more easily read and understood by us humans. Now, the main benefit for us modders or hackers is that the majority of these languages get broken down into machine code, and Cheat Engine can read the machine code and display it as assembly code. In other words, if we learn to read and modify assembly code, we can use Cheat Engine to make the changes we want in games written in many other programming languages. And we only need to learn one language, assembly. So with that said, let's take a look at the basic syntax for assembly. In assembly, each line of code will begin with a command. And most assembly commands are accompanied by one or more operands separated by a comma. And note that there will always be a space between the command and its operands. And in Cheat Engine, the operand to the commas left is considered the destination, while the operand on the right is considered the source. And to make sense of what this actually means, let's bring in the game instruction from the script we were looking at earlier and break down what it's doing. First, we have the command. MOV is short for move. It tells the source to copy its contents into the destination. And in this example, the destination is a memory address. And I know that because in assembly, memory addresses are contained inside brackets. And the source in this example is a register. And a register, by the way, is simply a storage container that holds a value. Now, to be clear, the destination doesn't have to be an address, and the source doesn't need to be a register. That's just how it is in this particular line of code. But okay, in our instruction, the memory address is being updated with a new value, and Cheat Engine can show us exactly what this is doing if we know where to look. We can right-click the XP address and hit Find Out What Writes to This Address, and then we can do something in the game to cause a change in the XP value, and our line of code will load back into this window. And if we click on the instruction to highlight it, Cheat Engine will show us the values of every register when this instruction was executed. So, let's take a look at RBX down here, which is the source in our instruction. It's holding 6AF6, which might look like nonsense, but this value is actually in hexadecimal. Now, we won't take a deep look at the hexadecimal number system in this video, but there are three main things you should know for right now. 1. The hexadecimal number system uses digits 0 through 9 and letters A through F for a total of 16 digits, instead of the decimal system that holds only 10 digits, which you may be more accustomed to. 2. Hex 0 through 9 and decimal 0 through 9 are equal to each other, but as soon as you go above 9, the values are no longer equivalent. For example, decimal 10 is actually equal to hex A, and hex 10 equals decimal 16. And 3. In assembly, values are displayed in hexadecimal by default, so we'll need to convert them to decimal to make sense of what's going on. Now, the good news is that conversion is pretty easy. You can just go to your favorite search engine and look for online hexadecimal converters. Or if you have Windows, you can load the calculator program, hit these three lines, change the mode to programmer, select hex, and then go to Cheat Engine, copy the hex value, and then paste it into the calculator, which will show us the decimal conversion right here. And if we drag the calculator over, we can see that the decimal value matches my current XP value. So it appears that the register was holding my current XP value, which is then being moved into the destination, which is a reminder, is a memory address. And remember, the XP address is what we right-clicked to load this instruction, so it's safe to say that this is the XP address. 
And if I come down to RSI and copy the value it's holding into the calculator and then add 8 to it as shown in the brackets, we can clearly see that it matches my XP address. And with this information, we can deduce exactly what this instruction is doing. Each time we level up, this instruction is copying the current XP value that's being held in RBX and moving it into my XP address. It's at this moment that the XP address gets updated with the new XP value as calculated by the game. So if I delete this instruction and activate the script, my XP value is frozen in place when I level up because the instruction that was updating the XP address isn't there anymore. But alright, let's head back to the script now and I'll first restore the code to exactly where it was. This is pretty important because if you place the code in the wrong place, you'll probably crash your game. So to avoid that, a better way to remove the code if you need to would be to place two forward slashes before the command which will make everything on this line after the slash is a comment and it'll basically be ignored when you activate the script. And by doing it this way, we can restore the code just by deleting the two slashes. But okay, instead of removing the code which just freezes the XP value, let's actually change it to place a number that we want into the XP address. There are a few different ways we can do this, and the fastest probably would just be to remove RBX and replace it with a number, but for a more thorough demonstration, I'm going to add some additional code to the script. Now, until you know exactly what you're doing, I'd recommend keeping all the assembly code between this new mem label and this exit label. The assembly code will get run from top to bottom, so any code I type above the original game instruction will happen before it, and I'll use the same command and syntax as we see below. First, MOV, then a space, and I'll type RBX first because that's what I want as a destination, then a comma, and then I'll put in a number I want placed into RBX, and I'll just do a million. And what this should do is put one million into RBX right here, which will override whatever the game put in RBX before this, and then down here our one million should get copied and moved into the XP address. So let's test it. I'll click OK, activate the script, and then level up in the game. And as expected, my XP is increased to hex 1 million. And if you weren't expecting that, remember that in assembly, numbers are in hexadecimal format. And apparently, this is the decimal version for hex 1 million. Now, while this worked out okay this time, you're not normally going to want to blindly put in a hex number like I just did and hope it works out. So instead, let's tell Cheat Engine that what we really wanted was the 1 million from the decimal system. And to do that, we can just come directly before the first digit and add a number symbol, which on the standard keyboard is Shift 3. And now we'll hit OK to save that change, reactivate the script, and then level up again. And there we go. There's my 1 million XP. And as I keep leveling, we can see that the XP is frozen at 1 million. But in Neo, we won't get very far with just a million XP, so I'll add just a few more zeros. And now I'll be able to make some serious progress. Until I reach the level cap of 400, that is, where I can't really level up my stats anymore. So, to get around this, we could scan for our level and then make a script to freeze it in place while we increase our stats. But in this game, 99 for each stat is only the soft cap, and you can actually get them higher much later in the game. But I'd rather have the real max stats now. So instead of a script for the actual level, I'll write a script for each stat that will set it to the actual cap when I level them up. And in this game, we can easily scan for each stat by doing a few exact value 4 byte scans. And I'm only going to show you how to do this for the body stat, but it's going to be the same for all the stats. So just like before, we right click the address, then choose what writes to it. Then we go level up, select the instruction, hit show disassembler, then hit tools, then auto assemble. And then over here, click template, cheat table framework, and then template again, then code injection, and then hit OK over here. And then in the script, I'll do almost the exact same thing as before. MOV, then a space, then the register I see in the below instruction first, then a comma, and this time INT in parentheses, and then the real stat cap. And by the way, INT is just another way to tell Cheat Engine that you want this to be the decimal conversion, not the hex value. And all right, as a quick recap, 200 will get placed into ESI, which will replace the value the game put in there, and then down here, our 200 will get placed into the body stat address. So let's add the script to the cheat table, give it a name, activate it, and then test it. And there we go. We've broken through the early game stat cap, and now we won't need to wait until the end of the game to have a fully nice character. And we did all this just knowing one command. Imagine what we could do if we knew even more assembly. So let's take a look at another command. I'll quickly find the address holding my current arrow's value by doing a few exact value 4 byte scans, and then I'll find out what writes to the address when I fire an arrow. And this time we see a different command here, SUB. 
Well, if MOV is short for move, we could take a guess and say that SUB might stand for subtract. And if it does, this instruction is probably subtracting arrows as I fire them. Let's see if my arrows stop subtracting if I replace the instruction with code that does nothing, just like I did in Game Hacking 201. And look at that! Oh. Well, that didn't work. I lost all my arrows pretty much immediately and I can't seem to fire my bow. Well guys, when we're hacking, sometimes this kind of stuff happens. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss the next video where I'll show you how to get around this little mishap. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.